king, Lord, our shepherd, our savior. In you, we shall not want. You, we live, we move, we have our being. It's in you that we are allowed to be completely and totally embraced in the love that you share and give to us. What a mighty God that we serve. Angels bow before you. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore you. What a mighty God we serve. And so I'm grateful to God today for a new day. More of you, God, less of me and my fleshly er er erroneous ways. More of you, God, less of me, whereby my spirit leaps. Glory to God, knowing that God reigns and has a plan for our lives. Welcome. Welcome to the Ephesians 320 Ministries. I am Elder Lisa. The ambassadors are going to be joining me shortly, and we're going to go into our Sunday school lesson for today. And I'm excited because it's a great opportunity for us to think about the righteousness of God in us. And it's entitled Renewed in God's Love. Today, June the 25th, 2023, lesson number four of the International Sunday School Lesson Plan. Grab Zephaniah chapter three, verses 14 through 20 and join us. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I woke up this morning, yes, oh God, with my mind saved. My mind is on the Lord Jesus. I realized if it had not been for the sacrifice of Jesus, yeah, I wouldn't even have this relationship that we have. We wouldn't have this connectivity like we have unless our minds, unless our hearts had been, unless our soul had been revived by the promise of the Lord Jesus in this uh, time that we have together. I'm so thankful uh, again for you ambassadors. I give God praise, hallelujah, for you Christ ambassadors uh, making his appeal uh, of his work, work in you to others. I thank God for you being a demonstration of the light of righteousness and peace that you can go out into a dark world and it doesn't change you, you change it. Glory to God, hallelujah. I'm grateful to God for Zephaniah chapter three, verses 14 through 20, our Sunday school lesson for today. Uh, after our prayer, we will begin. I'm gonna ask uh, the persevering sister Nanette to start us off, I mean, you deserve to get it all in, right? You deserve to be able, hallelujah, to start it off as much as you had to persevere this morning. So start us by reading uh, 14 through uh, 17. And then uh, Sister Hubbard, we're going to, uh, yes, Lord God, Sister uh, Hubbard, I'm just going to have to make some adjustments here real quickly. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I had to stop uh, your video, Sister Sherry. There's something happening, but God bless you. Thank you so much. So glad you are here. Not sure if you were wanting to read today, but I had to stop your video and explain later. And we give God praise for you, hallelujah, being with us on today. So Sister Hubbard, I'm going to ask you when it's time to read verses 18 through 20, and if you're on page number, um, what is that? Uh, the, the leading page of our lesson today, uh, it repeats verse number 17 at the bottom. I think that was maybe, a, I don't know if they were trying to reemphasize verse number 17, but you don't have to reread it. That's where it begins at the bottom with the Lord your God. That's the repeat of verse number 17. So only read 18 through 20 for me, please, when it is your turn. We give God praise and glory for you. Hallelujah. And why, we, why do we pray? Because it's a gift. First of all, it's a gift to be able to pray and talk to the Lord about what is on our hearts and our minds. And then also it's a conversation with God. So then we also find out what's on God's mind, what God is thinking about, what God con is concerned by. So let's pray. Let's pray. Hallelujah. As we get our minds on one accord in prayer. Yes, Lord, thank you for all you have done. Yes, oh God, thank you for all you have done. God, we thank you for being such a mighty and sweet God. God, we thank you 
We thank you. We thank you for being a present God, that you are on time, God. Thank you that this time that we have to come together and worship you. You said we're two or three or gathered together. You're in the midst. And so it's more than two of us, Lord, who believe that you, God, are our creator, sustainer, and that you gave us your son, Jesus, our redeemer, our righteousness, our return to you. And Jesus, you then sent the Holy Spirit that will be present with us at all times, teaching us and leading us and guiding us. We take that back into our hearts today as we even come to you in prayer. We we recite our, our knowledge and our belief in knowing that you are with us right now. You, you have never left us, nor will you ever plan to leave us. And we, we may be failed and left you. We may have failed and left your promise or left your covenant or left our hope to the wayside. But God, please forgive us Forgive us, oh God, for anything that caused you to turn from us and shake your head. Forgive us if we lacked faith. You said it's impossible to please you without it. Please forgive us if we were rebellious or hard of heart or we were judgmental or overly critical of others. I heard you yesterday when you said, I love everybody. I'm not concerned, God, about why they are the way they are. I know you love them. And if you love them, I should do what I should do to love them as well. So help us to see your people like you see your people. Help us to serve them even in spite of, rather, their difficulties in their judgment. God, we are your people called by your name. So humbly, Humbly, like Zephaniah is going to remind us, humbly we come before you. Humbly we submit that we are not perfect, but we're striving, God, to be better every day. We want to be better and more mindful of you because you renew us in your love. And so, God, there are some who need you today for your love to lavish on them with regards to their health or with regards to their strength. And so God, we're asking that you will do that for them. If they're in the hospital, Lord, we ask you touch their bodies. We ask that you touch brother, uh, uh, Mr. Brother God and his body in the hospital on uh, the last I heard on Thursday. God, we're asking you now in the name of Jesus that those who are in the nursing home, Lord, that you will come through room to room, bed to bed, like a flood, and help them to know your power and authority, where you can reverse whatever issue has tried to lay them down and lay them out, God, but you can strengthen their bodies. You can strengthen their bodies, and I hear you, Holy Ghost, and you want to strengthen their spirit. So Lord, I pray that people are being encouraged by your word, that they will come across this broadcast and find a hope in you. Uh, this hope is in you and nothing less than Jesus, your blood, your righteousness. Lord, we're thankful to you today. And we hear you say that blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted. So everyone we know that's grieving in these last few weeks, Lord, are coming into times of funeralizing their loved ones this week. We're asking you to strengthen their heart, strengthen their soul, their mind, their will, their emotion. Help them to keep on the journey of trusting that you are God and there's nobody else. You are the one who gives and you are the one who takes life. And it was Job and said, blessed be the name of you in every season. So God, we know you'll wipe their tears you are the comforter, you're the keeper, you're the sustainer. And so God, now as we come before you with this word in Zephaniah 3, we're asking you to speak to us through this prophet that we will know how, what, when, where, how to keep on guard about your love, your care, your compassion for your people. Thank you that you won't have to say woe to us, but thank you that you'll sing about us. That you'll have a song to sing because you'll look at our lives and you'll be, oh God, you'll be glad that we turn from our wicked ways. You'll be glad that we gave ourselves fully over to you. I pray for these ambassadors, whatever they need, God, in their lives, in their personal lives, in their family lives, in their community lives. God, I pray you will honor them, acknowledge their heart's desire and honor them, oh God. 
with their request in the name of Jesus, Lord. You said every knee will bow in the name of Jesus, Lord. You said every tongue will confess in the name of Jesus. When we ask, we shall receive. And so it's in Jesus' name that we, your people, do submit this prayer, God. Hallelujah. And we look with great expectation for your answers and your manifestation. The people of God say amen. Hallelujah. If you will and are able, clap your hands. Clap your hands, all ye people, and give God a praise, a rejoice. Yes, oh God. Hallelujah to you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, oh God. Renewed. 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 <laughs> renewed in God's love. Renewed in God's love. I've been renewed in God's love. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We've been renewed in God's love. Thank you, Sister Nanette, whenever you are ready. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Thank you. Thank Lord. you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Good yes. morning, Sister King. Good morning, Sister King. 320 Ministry. God bless you in a mighty way. I and I see you that. Amen. And as you said, the Sunday school lesson is called Renewed in God's Love. And the readings will be from Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 14 through 20. And the lesson is coming from the NIV, the New International Version. Hallelujah. And as you directed, I will be reading verses 14 through 17 of Zephaniah chapter 3. And 14 says, Sing, daughter Zion. Shout aloud, Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Never again will you fear any harm. On that day, they will say to Jerusalem, do not fear Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. And verse 17 says, the Lord, your God, is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. Go ahead, Sister Hubbard, right away. You go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. Going to verse 18. I will remove from you all who mourn over the loss of your appointed festival which is a burden and reproach for you. At that time, I will deal with all who oppress you. I will rescue the blame. I will gather the exile. I will give them praise and honor in every land where they have suffered shame. 20, at that time, I will gather you. I will gather you. At that time, I will bring you home. I will give you honor and praise among all the people of the earth. When I restore your fortune, before your eyes, before your very eyes, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, ambassadors. Mm. You, know, you know, when we are looking at scripture, we have often said that when you see repetitive uh, thought or word that, you know, don't ignore it, right? So I see a lot of praise and honor. Mm. I see a lot of praise and honor in this particular chapter. And I also see at that time, at that time, which uh, leads me to realize that this is a prophetic message that may be uh, given to a people that might not see these promises specifically in their own lifetime. They, they might not see it because there's an appointed time. What we, we, we said about appointed times, there's an appointed time. And so at that time, that means it's not this time. It, just, it means when Zephaniah is speaking or when Zephaniah's words were going forward, it didn't mean that time. It meant at the time that is yet to come. So this prophet is giving a future uh, hope and perspective, which is good because if you had any uh, time to read it's only three chapters in the book of Zephaniah but if you had some time to read one chapter one or two it's a lot of woe it's a lot of judgment it's a lot of a, uh, getting together I'm not playing I have a wrath you have been forewarned uh, and God is still the same God today that uh, God has allowed us to experience some of the things that uh, we have experienced 
people of God, because God still has a wrath and God will utilize certain things to happen to get our attention back to the road of righteousness and obedience. And I'm glad it benefited me. I was on a road of destruction. So when God interrupted and allowed a calamity, uh, as far as I was concerned, it was a calamity. And when God permitted that, it shook me to my core and got me back on track. Is that anybody else? Was there anything in your life that kind of shook you? And maybe it didn't necessarily happen to you only. Maybe it happened universally and you saw something happen. 9-11 did it for a lot of people. Uh, uh, certain natural uh, disasters, maybe earthquakes or tornadoes or hurricanes may have shaken some people to say, you know what? This thing is real. God is not absolutely playing, right? So absolutely. I'm thankful to God that there is uh, the hope. So we see now after all of the... Uh, after all of the uh, judgments of one and two and the uh, wrath of God because of their disobedience and mainly, again, idolatry. And, and some would say, well, that's just such a, a hard concept, Elder. We don't, we don't have images. That I'm not worshiping this stapler. And so I'm not an idolatrous person. Well, you know what? Mm -hmm. uh, we do have to be careful that things have not become our priority. If they're so, in, in other words, idolatry is also to be said this way when we put anything or anyone before God, period, that's your idolatry. So, whatever you put or may have pers person, place, or thing before God, so even if you put you before yeah. God, because you want to do whatever you want to do, you've idolatized yourself, idolatized yourself over God. So that's why God is saying, get it together. Because yeah. there's going to be a hope, and there's hope is in the fact that, so for me, the key verse, that, that, that God will be so delighted in us, huh, God, that he will no longer rebuke us, verse number 17, but will rejoice and sing about us Ooh, that's yeah sing have a song with my name in it god that's what i'm saying have a song that says and my daughter lisa she does what i ask yeah my daughter come on now i want yeah come on sing with me sister hubbard i want uh, i want god to be singing over me rejoicing Hallelujah. about me and not rebuking me uh -huh. then that makes sense that makes sense okay that makes sense Amazing. Mm -hmm. So let me take your questions. Let's start it off with your thoughts after you've had a chance to be with this word over this week or last night or this morning, <laughs> however it worked out. Yeah, I thought that the author thought it necessary and 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 rightly so to repeat 17 twice. As mm -hmm. you said, that is repeated again after 20. That is something that should be repeated multiple times and then it's the key text too so it just wants to be <laughs> you know yeah even if it was a even if it was maybe a uh, editorial uh blip that someone just didn't see it had showed up again i don't, I don't think anything is by accident with god i mean it's, it's not hurting it certainly not. didn't hurt me it, it matter of fact it made me look at it again and say wait a minute didn't i just read that uh -huh. and, okay. and i said oh yeah i did oh yeah yeah that's right here it's 17 and how did it it's appear perfect. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm good with it. I, I, I just wanted to point it out, right? Because I just don't know sometimes um, if it's just me, but I'm like, I was reading and all of a sudden, and so yeah, it's a really, it's a, it's a key verse, it's our key verse, and it's also yeah. imperative to us because when we um, read the previous verses uh, in, in this same chapter, chapter three, the one of hope, uh, woe to oppressors in verse number one, uh, obeys no one that's you know that's people who don't, don't want to take any instruction who uh want to be their own leader their own captain rather of their own ship um five unrighteousness uh knows uh uh no shame because when you are unrighteous then that behavior becomes so normal to that individual that it doesn't even feel shameful and, and it's, it's until you, it's until Zephaniah says, until you wake up to the understanding of who God is and what God is asking for us 
uh, and what is it? It actually is found in the devotional reading in Second Corinthians chapter five. If you had a chance to read it, I'm going to ask uh, Sister Jeanette to read it for us in just a bit. But uh, not living for ourselves, but for God. <clears throat> not living for ourselves, but and that's a huge ask, isn't it? To for God to ask us, who are you living for me? Are you living for your spouse? Are you living for your children? Or are you living? for God, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a huge mm -hmm. ask. And so that's an individual question. I can't answer it for you, uh, but uh, that would be something to think about this week, possibly. Any other uh, observations or questions before we begin? And thank you all for who are joining us live in, 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 or in the replay. We're thankful to God for you. Say good morning to us. Say good, say good evening. Say good Good afternoon, whatever time you join us, let us know. And where are you from? If you're not from St. Louis, we're in St. Louis, Missouri. And if you're not from St. Louis, let us know where you are from. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, God. No other questions. All right, well, then let's go. Let's, let's take a look and see what our uh, lesson gives to us today. I wanted to share this too. Let me see if I can share this with you. You don't need that or say, you might like that music, but you don't need that music, <laughs> hallelujah. Um, but there is a summary that I've provided to our Sunday school scholars that meets once a month. And if anyone's interested in, in joining that, please um, join us. We'd love to have you. We'll be meeting um, this coming Saturday, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact. And in uh, that time that we have together, we saw that God is king, uh -huh. God is king. And why is that important? Does anybody remember what the issue that the um, people of God were so demanding of? Anybody remember what that was? People got so demanding of. Hmm. Yes. They wanted a king. Everybody, every other nation had a king. Oh, is, Israel wanted a king and they so wanted a king. And, and God and God was like, but I'm your king. Uh -huh. And part of the issue continued to be trusting in hu other human beings when God said, but I'm your king. Uh -huh. And if you exalt, when you exalt me, you'll see the benefit over your life. And so this whole unit has been about the prophets proclaiming God's power. And I'm trying to get to this screen right here. We've been studying all the prophets, right? Isaiah, Ezekiel, last week, and now Zephaniah. And Zephaniah, um, the book, the three chapters of Zephaniah all speak to the theme of the approaching day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is approaching. The day mm -hmm. of the Lord is approaching. That God is going to send forth God's promised king to take them on. They wanted a king. Okay, there's going to be a promised king. And we do know he comes through the line of David. We talked about that last week, right? So this day, though, uh, also uh, is one of judgment. <laughs> Wake up. It's the one of judgment against those who sin against God. And one of blessings for those who follow him. That's why I keep saying, let's follow God. Let's follow God. I want to see the blessings not only over my life, but over your lives and over the lives of those who God sends us to minister and lead. And one of the blessings for those who follow him. So this book declares judgment on many nations, all of which who oppose God through opposition to his people. Let me say it again. All of which oppose God through opposition to God's people. So you can offend God by offending God's people. Uh -huh. That's why it's, we want to be careful not to say just anything about other people. That, that's God's, those are God's people. And we want not to be guilty of that. We want to be found not oppressing God's people, not uh, defaming God's people, not criticizing God's people. I, I, I keep saying, remember the old adage, if you can't say nothing nice, don't say nothing at all. We'll just So we find people be real quiet. <laughs> uh, so, all right. Um, so in this first verse, this Old Testament prophet, um, there, there's lots of conversation about um, the book of the day of the Lord, the judgment, and that God's um, 
plight for humanity is to get back to overcoming injustice and wickedness. Uh, and that's iniquity. So any iniquity, that's a word for your vernacular if you haven't used it in a while. It's an older word. Most people don't even use iniquity. We just say sin. But iniquity is just gross injustice, wickedness. It's a violation of right of duty. So we have a duty to live righteously and holy. And the consequence for not doing so is death. The death that's to come, the news of death, the prophecies of death. Without repentance, there will be death. Why do we know that? Because the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through who? Christ Jesus. And that this message of the uh, persecution is because of the iniquity of God's people. So God had to shake people up to get people to get to a point where they would come to the hope. Amen. Like if, if it takes the prophet to give the woe message and the get it together. And if you don't, there will be death. And if you don't, there will be famine. And if you don't, there will be diseases and plagues and wars because whatever it takes to get our attention, God will permit it. Why? Because God reigns. And so it is uh, also noted about Zephaniah, just a little bit of background. That Zephaniah is the great, great, great grandson of King Hezekiah, one of my favorite kings. Uh, he's he's not all he's not all bright sometimes. Um, he's he's the king that actually uh, in Second Kings chapter number twenty that uh, has been given a, uh, a a pronouncement by the prophet Isaiah that get your house in order because you're about to die. This sickness is going to be unto death, and Hezekiah prays. I like Hezekiah. Hezekiah prays. And when Hezekiah prays, God hears Hezekiah's prayer, sends the prophet Isaiah back and says, mm -hmm. I've changed my mind. I'm going mm -hmm. to extend his life 15 more years. Anybody glad about what prayer can do? I'm glad yeah. about what prayer can do. Now, Hezekiah <laughs> is then said to be Zephaniah's great, great, great grandson. And so that's why Zephaniah as a prophet is said to not be intimidated by people in royal position. He came from royalty. Uh, and so um, that helps us to understand a little bit more about Zephaniah. But the book of Zephaniah is said to be about three things, judgment, punishment, and hope. Judgment, punishment, and hope. So for those of us who have parents who were about getting yourselves together and willing to punish you to do so, they follow this understanding of God, that God punishes rebellious behavior to get people back on track. And that there's always hope, though, that follows. With, with God, there's a hope because I, I, when, I, when there's a punishment, I'm hopeful you won't do that again. So that's why I said that when people go back to the same issue, they're like, you're going back to vomit. I mean, like, who goes back to something that God permitted punishment to get your attention and you get the hope of, of, of deliverance? And then when you're in it for a while, comfortable, then you go back. Well, that's foolishness, right? So we don't we don't want to do that. So this, so Zephaniah's book is about judgment, punishment, and hope. And again, we are in the hope section of that and that the punishment was promised to be a tool of God. Here it is to purify the people. So one of the prayers that I wonder about uh, when we pray is instead of just asking God to do stuff, how about purify my heart? Purify my thoughts. Because if purification is important to God, if God allowed the punishment and the promises to lead to purification, then purification of God's people is important to God. Purify our hearts. What, what does it say? Purge us with hyssop. Make us over, creating us a clean heart. So purification is very important uh, to God. All right. So that's all my kind of introductory uh, comments. Um, Zephaniah is a leading a leading prophet. Well, here's the thing, minor prophets, major prophets, that's kind of sad because what makes them minor prophets, which is what Zephaniah is considered to be, is not because of his uh, 
message being less authentic or less needful, being the minor prophet means that you just have three chapters. You didn't have as much to say. <laughs> that the major prophets just had a little bit more to say. But you know, maybe maybe shorter, maybe short is better because now we get right to the crust of the matter real quickly. Judgment, punishment, hope. Judgment, punishment, hope. All in three chapters. And so, um, he considered again a, to be a minor prophet, but he prophesies again during a time uh, of one of uh, the kings that is a good king, considered to be a good king, Josiah, that institutes some practices, uh, but it doesn't yet get implemented. You know, with good leadership, when they, they make these great ideas, and sometimes it just kind of sits on the shelf, and it doesn't get implemented. He's under a king that has some great ideas, and the ideas have not yet gotten implemented for the sake of the people, but what Zephaniah's role is, is to help Israel to stay a part of the focus of righteousness and purity and the promises so that they can be restored. Because when you get restored, everybody may not be going, but there's going to be a remnant. It may not be all your friends, but if one of your friends gets the message, it's going to be a remnant. It may not be all of the city, but some of the city is going to be the remnant that will accept the message and come back. And that will allow God to praise. Hallelujah. Um, hallelujah. So there's a praise unto God first in verse number 14. Sing, daughter Zion, shout aloud uh, to Israel, be glad and rejoice with all your heart. This basically is signifying that God's personification of God's people is familial, like a family, like a father to his daughter, like a mother to a son, right? It's familial and God wants them to know that they are still a part of this family of God. And he refers to them lovingly as a daughter. And that's not uncommon that cities and people in scripture, especially in the Old Testament, most bodies of people are referred to in the female. The word itself in the Hebrew is a female word, a noun. And so um, that's why daughter Jerusalem, daughter Zion, uh, but it doesn't eliminate the men. So don't get, you know, it's just that the, the peoples are considered to be uh, daughter Zion. And that uh, the name of Israel has several, you know, you can hear me say Israel and it could mean, um, it can mean the 12 tribes. You hear me say Israel. It can mean the 10 tribes of the Northern Kingdom. If I can say Israel, it could be all the people. If I say Israel, it could be the remnant of the people. And But the ultimate thing that will help us is that as a New Testament uh, side to this story, we know it's all those who would what? Believe. When you believe, your believing leads to your obedience. And so now if you believe and are not obedient, then your believing is in vain. But he's talking to believers. He's talking to believers and he wants them to stay connected to the promise and not to get caught up into uh any other shame. Now, what leads to the shame? What leads to the shame? Well, so it says four reasons why the people were to sing. Let's make sure uh -huh. we understand the four reasons. And they can be found under verse number 15. What are the four reasons why the people were to sing and shout and rejoice? Well, first, it's because the day of the Lord has been prophesied uh -huh. and that all the punishment will cease. Yes, God. Secondly, uh -huh. that God will defeat the enemy Babylon. Hallelujah. That's good for you too, because God uh -huh. will defeat the enemy. Uh -huh. I still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And if God defeated their enemy, God will defeat your enemy. Your enemy. I don't know what the battle is that you're facing, but whatever the enemy has tried to put in your way to get you 
to feeling shame or rejection, that's the devil. Feeling left alone or uh, abandoned by God, that's the devil. Whatever the devil has attempted to try to steal, kill, and destroy from you, even if it has gotten into you to make you change your mind about who God is, it's got to go. God is mm. going to defeat. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. He's going to defeat the devil. <laughs> and make them turn back away from you in the name of Jesus. So that's the second thing that they should okay. rejoice. Not only they should rejoice about, but that we should rejoice about okay. too. Yeah. Any okay. questions about those first two reasons? Why, why they should rejoice, which sounds similar to me, why we should rejoice too. Amen. We should rejoice that Jesus Christ is coming back for us. Yes. We should rejoice that Jesus came. We should yeah. rejoice that Jesus has sent the Holy Spirit. So when you talk about the day of the Lord uh, uh, and, and that we have been redeemed, we should, of all people, the, the repentant ones, we should always be rejoicing. <laughs> we should always have a hand up saying, thank you, Jesus. You should almost Amen. walk through your house all day today. Just thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus, for redeeming us right so that's the first reason the second one is because he's going to defeat the enemy still excited about that still excited about that thank you lord going to defeat the enemy no questions about those first two renewed in god's love yes lord god so the number three is uh, the third reason why the people should rejoice why you have why do you need a reason? Well, if you need a reason, here's the third reason. The third <laughs> reason is um, that the uh, Lord, who's the real king, it says, by the way, the real king of Israel uh, will be with the people. Amen. Ah. Now, the, the reason that this is hard for Zephaniah's audience, because remembering at this time, God is um, the promise of God being with the people in a very personal way has not yet been established, right? We have the benefit of the Holy Spirit right now. You, When you confess your hope in Jesus Christ, Jesus gives you his Holy Spirit immediately. And you now have the presence of God with you all the time. Thank you. So this feeling of being absent from God, that's, that's false. It's when we have repented and accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, come on, gospel message, and Jesus Christ is the Son of God who has come to take away your sins, you've repented from it, then Jesus cleanses our hearts and sends us the Holy Spirit into our being so that we have this constant presence of God. So the people at this time did not have that promise. Mm -hmm. So they had to go to where God would be. So to understand that this promise is a future promise, Zephaniah is talking about something in the future that's yet to come, right? He's saying mm -hmm. the reason you should rejoice is because there's going to be a time where the king will be with the people. That time is through Jesus's promise. And that... Um, the, and that the presence of the king was so important to the people. So then to hear that message made them very excited. So according, so on the screen, you'll see, according to Zephaniah, uh, that the delight that God will have in us will chase away fear because God did not give us a spirit of fear. Uh, we should not be afraid because God is with us, right? Uh, the maker of heaven and earth is singing and delighting over his people. Uh, why, why back away in fear if God is with us? Second, um, a wonderful God. How can anything offered to him be lacking in energy and luster? So for all of those who come to God with that, oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, mm -mm. <laughs> oh, no, if that's all the energy God has given you, I, I, won't, I won't question it. But if you have more energy that you can give to other things and accept not to God in praise and adoration and it lacks luster, God is challenging that. <laughs> God is challenging you today to do better. And then there's a peace that comes because Zephaniah's message 
is to believers even today that God, yes, oh God, hallelujah, that God, I gotta move this out of my way, uh, invites his children rooted in him to rest in his love, place their hope in him, and the ill effects of the Lord's enemies no longer have to reside in the hearts of Christians. You, we don't have to be hard of heart and angry mm -hmm. and bitter and suspicious. Oh God, because you've got this gift of discernment. You don't have to be suspicious. Just ask God, God, what's going on with this? Yes. Mm -hmm. You, we don't have to be suspicious. God, you ask God, God will lead us and guide us and that God replaces because the enemy wants you to be all, you know, bound up and, 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 oh God, tangled up and tied up and that Satan's garbage will be replaced with joy and peace. Anybody grateful for your joy? This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The That's world right. can't take it away. This peace that I have surpasses all understanding, helps me to keep my heart and mind stayed on him. And that what happens when this happens, rather, when the believer realizes the Lord is always with us, God has uh -huh. all power over heaven and earth, and God walks by my side. Baby, there's nothing that can come to you that you and God can't handle. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Yes, nothing. yes. Now, you, mm -hmm. yeah, if I try to do it on my own, it's going to be a debacle. But I'm talking about me and with God, me and following God, <laughs> me trusting in the Lord, me leaning not to my own understanding, but waiting to hear from God. Zephaniah is saying that that's number th the third reason we should celebrate and rejoice. And then the fourth reason is found in verse number 15. See, never again mm -hmm. will you fear any mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The fourth reason is the one I just noted that you can rejoice that God is with you and that you don't have to be afraid. Amen. That nothing that the enemy tries to present to you should not make us afraid. I've lost some things over the last 14 months and I'm still not afraid. Why? Because God is with me. I testified to a sister yesterday and she said, you don't look like you smiling a little too much. I said, because I have no, I'm not. I'm not ashamed. I'm not afraid. I'm con I, I believe that God is with me. Mm -hmm. God is, do you believe God is with you? Yeah. When yeah. God is with you, you don't have to be afraid. When God is with you, you okay. don't have to be afraid. So this point of Zephaniah is to reestablish uh, the kingdom of God, to get full restoration for the people of God, and to find that even in difficult situations. Exile is not easy. Being in punishment or time out with God is not easy. But when you get yourself back together again and get back on track, even in exile, you'll have peace. You won't be afraid, won't be overwhelmed, and won't have your joy robbed from you. Yeah. So he cautions them on that day, they will stay to Jerusalem in verse number 16. Do not let your hands hang limp. That what is what do you think that might mean? Do not let your hands verse number 16. On that day, they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear Zion, do not let your hands hang limp. What's your first don't get weary? Don't get weary. Yeah, don't get weary. And what can happen in weariness, Sister Nanette? What do you think might happen to a person if they're in weariness? Attack of the, the devil, Satan. Attack. Well, that's the, yeah, that's the source of it. But what do you think can happen to an individual who finds themselves do, being weary? They, they give up. They give up? That means they mm -hmm. stop doing what? They stop working. Mm -hmm. they, stop, they stop using. Don't let your hands hang limp. Don't find that you don't get up to prayer. Don't find that you don't get to the study of the word. Don't, fi don't find yourself, what? Not doing anything. Because what can happen is you get traumatized by the situation and you just don't do nothing. Don't just stand there and do nothing. Uh -huh. Don't let our weariness make us do nothing. Keep moving, keep praising, keep trusting, keep serving, keep studying, keep believing, keep moving. Don't do nothing. That's not an option. Uh -huh. Keep helping what most people say is when they were in their worst despair, what they found blessed them the most was helping somebody else. That's it. That's it. 
Comfort for the sorrowful. I'll remove all who mourn over the loss of your appointed festival. See that in verse number 18? Mm -hmm. so, so I mentioned earlier that there are some words about uh, the repetitive words. Uh, so in the NIV, it says, remove from all who mourn over the loss of your appointed festivals. At that time, I will deal with all who oppress you. I will rescue the lame. I will gather the exiles. I will give them praise and honor in every land where they have suffered shame. I'm sorry, 18B, I didn't read, which is burden and reproach. Reproach and shame are defined as the same word. What could cause shame to Jerusalem? What's causing, what's causing the people, uh, I will remove from all who mourn over the loss of your, why are they mourning at a festival? What could cause them to mourn at a festival? So that may be a little hard to answer. So let me just jump right in and say, what could cause people to feel ashamed about the festivals for the people who can't be there? Mm -hmm. So if they can't be there because the festivals in, in, this, in this particular culture, for those who live too far away from Jerusalem, they couldn't get to the appointed festivals. They were often put to shame by their fellow Jews. You don't have enough money to get to the festival. Huh. You didn't make good preparation to get to the festival. Mm -hmm. As if the festival is the end all be all to my relationship with God. God is saying, I remove all of the shame that might come when you can't get to the place where others know and believe that you should be. And maybe even you know you can, but you live too far away. Don't let that keep you in the spirit of shame. I'm promising to remove that from your heart. And how, so how does that relate to us? It relates to us, be, well, I'm, I'm not sure how it relates to you, but it can relate to us when people have put on me uh, things like, oh, you, you weren't there. Oh, you weren't there. No, I couldn't be, I can't be everywhere. I can't be everywhere. I'm only one person. I can't be everywhere. But people will try to shame you for not being there. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. I said, I remove all of that. If I wanted you there, I would have made an impression on your heart to be there. But some places you just can't be. And the people here were not only shaming self-shame, but they were getting shame from their peers. Mm -hmm. Oh, you didn't, I didn't see you at festival this morning. And then what does that sound like? I didn't see you at church this morning. Mm -hmm. And it's not because they're concerned about you. <laughs> it's because they want to shame you. Don't play with me. I know why you're saying it. You want me to be ashamed. Like, where were you? It was more important than you being here with, with us. Mm -hmm. My Lord, if because the priority for God is that I will rescue you, you won't have to be afraid. And that as long as you continue, or as you, not as long as, but as you continue to worship me, you are able to worship me if you live too far away from Jerusalem. Because again, it's going to be a time where you don't have to just get to Jerusalem to worship me. You'll be able to find me anywhere. I'll mm -hmm. be with you everywhere. Come on now. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Let's, let's get any other questions or comments or thoughts. Let's just get to the Woo! Yes, Lord. That, that's that's this is where this is where I pray that the Ephesians 320 ministries rest on the vision that we touch hearts, renew minds, and revive the righteous spirit, and that we make clear that God's righteousness is when we follow after God, and that that fellowship may be uh, done mostly. I hope at your own home. So therefore I can't tell you that being home is not a good place for you. If you're following the Lord, hallelujah, follow the Lord, follow the Lord, follow the Lord. Yeah. Now, yes, we are to come together in fellowship and we are doing just that to gain insight and to get uh, our luster back and our energy back. I pray it's getting you 
pumped up and excited how and, and, and that this does not only end the festival is not the only place you get God my point the festival okay. is not the only place you should be seeking God my point that's why the festival should not make you feel shame because you've been with God this morning you'll be with God tonight you'll be with God tomorrow and the noonday however time you pray okay. whenever you worship wherever you read in his word however you're singing songs however you're clapping your hands however you're doing your dance whatever you're doing that says i'm lord your lord i'm yours lord i'm yours mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes yes uh, zephaniah is reminding the people after all of the woes, after all of the shame, after all of the condemnation because of their consequences of their choices and their sins, over all of their inability to uh, remove money and material possessions and uh, non-material things and financial gain out of their priority and make prayer and make God and make study their present uh, priority he's saying there's going to be hope when you when you turn from that there's going to be hope for that i'm sorry you were reading that i'm sorry let's 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 have you read let's have you read that instead of second corinthians i'm gonna have sister hubbard read second corinthians i know she already did so then can you read that's on our screen for us please i will uh, try is it too small um no we got feedback now do you hear it? I don't. I okay, don't. Okay, good. It's just on my end. Uh, it's titled, Trusting with All Our Heart. The psalmist says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord, our God. He distinguishes between those who trust in God and those who do not. Specifically, the trust in those things that exude power and worldly worldly authority. Today, chariots and horses represents a wide range of things from such concrete things as money and material possessions, possessions to such non-material things as news reports and financial predictions. None of these things are necessarily bad in themselves, but when they displace our reliance on what the Lord has taught us, through scripture and his Holy Spirit, then they can trample our relationship with God. The key to trusting God is prayer. Prayer is the most tangible expression of trust in God, said Jerry Bridges, author of The Pursuit of Holiness and Holiness Day by Day. According to Bridges, as we place our trust in the Lord, he transforms transforms us into his holiness and we trust him when we pray sincerely and openly trust the past to god's mercy said augustine the present to god's love and the future to god's providence implicit in his implicit in his statement is both the power and the compassion of god as the mighty warrior God's son has atoned for our sins in an act of redemption that only he could perform. And he has already secured the ultimate victory for our salvation when we will abide in his heavenly kingdom. At this very moment, the Lord is showering us with his love that is expressed in his wondrous mercy. Therefore, we agree with Solomon who said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. That's Proverbs 3, verses five through six. Hallelujah. Trust in the Hallelujah. Lord with all your heart. That's the prayer. Yes. Trust in the Lord with yes. all your heart. Trust in the Lord. Don't trust uh -huh. in chariots and horses. Don't trust in the, their systems and their methods. Don't trust in their kings and that leadership. Don't trust in that. Okay. Trust in the Lord. Put God 
Oh. First, not your possessions. That stuff can rust or wither or be fragile and tear apart. Don't try. It can be taken away. It could be repossessed. Don't trust in that. Trust Come on. in Come on. the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the expression Hallelujah. of our faith. Yes, our yes, trust yes, yes. in the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And as I, as I do want to still read 2 Corinthians, I don't know, Sister Hubbard, uh, chapter 5, can you read that for us? Verses 12 through 23. Does that put you on the spot? I don't want to put you on the spot. You want me to read it? 2 Corinthians, but slow. I read, I try. Thank you so much. Chapter Order. 5. Uh-huh. Chapter 5, starting verse 15. Trump. 12, start with 12, 12 to 23, please. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. We are not trying to amend ourselves for you again, but are giving you the opportunity to take pride in us so that you can answer those who take pride in what is seen, not that what is in their heart. If we are out of our mind, as some say it is for God, then we are in our right mind, it is for you. For Christ's love, for Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And He died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, mm. but for Him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from his worldly point of view, though we once regarded Christ in this way. We do, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God, who, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the... Turn the page. <laughs> the ministry of reconciliation that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. No common people's sins again. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. And though God was making us appeal to us, we, impl we, implore, you, we implore you on Christ's behalf, on, on Christ's behalf. We, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be mm. sin for us. Mm. So that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. Preach, Sister uh, Hubbard. Hallelujah. Okay. We've been made ambassadors. Thank you so much that we've been made ambassadors that we can implore others on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. I wanted to close our time of this lesson to remind what Zephaniah was reminding to the people, the new Jerusalem, to reminding the people, the daughters of Zion. He was reminding the people, be reconciled to God. Let go of the sin. Come to the knowledge in this regard to Christ, the King of Kings. Be reconciled to God and that, that no sin, yeah, thank you, Lord, that he didn't even know sin, but became a curse on a tree that we would be liberated. He died so that we could live. He rose so that we could have power. He ascended so we could have the Holy Spirit. He is the reason that we are even on this road of righteousness today because of Jesus and his shed blood and his righteousness being distributed for those who would believe. And so if there's anybody who's watching and they have yet made a decision to follow Christ, I offer Christ to you because we want to reconcile those who don't know Jesus to get to know that Jesus became a sin on the cross of the tree. For us, he on the cross, he yes. took upon himself all the sins so that mm. we would not know this separation from oh, God, yes. that we would not know the condemnation of a death mm. to mm. eternal hell, that we would not know any of those uh, judgments that come with sin. Thank you, Zephaniah. Thank you, Zephaniah. <laughs> that there's still hope. Hallelujah. Thank you, Zephaniah. Yeah. That even after judgment and punishment, there's hope for those. Yes. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Elder Dr. Deborah's with us. And she said, Jesus did it 
for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People might try to shame you, but Jesus removed the shame. People might try to say how bad we were, how far we had gone, but Jesus paid the price that we would be liberated. And Zephaniah is talking about that hope, hallelujah, for the people who needed their liberation and how to get to that liberation is to repent, how to get to that liberation. And the reason they should rejoice is because there was a way of escape for their uh, judgment and for their decisions that were unrighteous. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Thank you all so much for all your reading today. And thank you for your participation and your questions and your inquiry. Uh, We're going to now have you be inquiring of a, a couple of questions on your quarterly quiz. You ready for your quiz? Ready for your quarterly quiz questions? They are uh, uh, coming, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. Okay. Yes, God, I'm so thankful to God for you all. And uh, uh, as, as Zephaniah said, daughters of Zion, I'm so glad, hallelujah, for the people of God who are standing with joy. Yeah, I, I like what the commentator says, overwhelmed by joy and gratitude. Where are the grateful people at? So grateful. Oh, so grateful. You, you're you overwhelmed that God would pick you and put your name in the book of life. You're over, You're grateful that you've been liberated. If God don't do nothing else, you've been liberated and you're grateful for that. All right. So quickly, quiz question number one, Zion can rejoice because the Lord has taken away what is in verse number 15. What did the Lord take away in verse number 15? Your punishment. Punishment. Mm-hmm. Very good, ambassadors. Thank God for you. Question number two, the Lord will show joy by doing what? Multiple choice, singing, dancing, both. It's found in verse number 17. What will the Lord be doing? Hallelujah, over you. Singing. Singing, singing. Sing for me, Lord. Sing about me, sing to me. Do sing, mm-hmm. Lord. Rejoice and show the joy that you will have, the delight, and remembering the delight. Where was the original? This is now. This is a flashback question. What? Where was the original place of delight that God's been trying to get us back to? Eden. Eden. Come on, glory, hallelujah. The place of delight. That's where God desires to get us back to. So thank you again so much. I appreciate all of you. Those of you online, God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us. Those in the replay, we're so honored that you are here and we are grateful to God. And as we close in this prayer uh, together, uh, this seals for us. Again, prayer does what it connects us to God and it seals us to what we believe we have read and studied today. So join me in our prayer today. Almighty God, we are thankful for the people who taught us about you. Mm. We are grateful for their examples of faithfulness and for the faith of others through the centuries. Today, we rededicate ourselves to be faithful unto the end, the end of our lives or the end when Jesus comes to gather his people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Put your hands together on that. Say, I believe that. And our thoughts to remember, God, we thank you. Resolve to stand on the promises of God today and all the tomorrows. Yeah, we stand on the promises of God. We stand on the promises of God. We stand on the promises of God. Thank you again so much. Uh, In lieu of our formal announcements, we just want to make sure you come back. Next Sunday is our first Sunday. It's our Lord's Communion. Uh, We will have, again, our services on Communion Sundays. They begin at 1030 a.m. Central Time, 1030 a.m. We'll be with our Pillars uh, Ambassadors, and we're grateful we got some things excitedly, hopefully, set up to do. Uh, for them as well. And so we're grateful to God. Join us on Tuesday morning at 525 Central Time for our Faith and Healing Prayer Line going into our 13th year there. And we are excited again about all that God is doing. It's the end of June, y'all. We're going into July. The six months is back. It's over. 
first six months go on. So we got to get ready now for the next six months of what God has in store for us. And so let's close with our prayer. Gracious God, we are so honored again that you love us and that you are with us and that you will sing over us when we come obediently uh, following after your will and your way. We can sing to you for those reasons that you've rebuked fear, you've rebuked judgment and punishment, and you've rebuked the devil on our behalf. We can sing to you all the praises of your goodness and your glory and your majesty, not just for us personally, but for those who we love and who we care for, that we can prophesy that the day of the Lord hallelujah, is upon us. And we have Jesus Christ as the great example for his love, for your love rather for us. And so now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceedingly great joy to our only wise God be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore in the people of God who believe God say amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, and thanking God, hallelujah. See you all, Tuesday morning prayer, Sunday morning, 1030 worship, hallelujah. Love you, love you, bye-bye. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah.